Sam. Okay, everybody. I'd like to call to order the March 25th, 2020, the March 15th, 2023 board meeting and remind everyone to please mute your audio when not speaking, as well as state your name prior to making a comment or motion and second for an action item. I'll begin this evening by asking each commissioner to, to please respond to with a here when I call out your name. Commissioner Doan. Commissioner Doan, we still can't hear you. Can you hear me OK? We'll think we'll. Uh, we can't hear you. Well, that's because my mic was muted. No, I got this really big screen, and it said you have been not been denied access to the meeting. And so I texted Tom and said, "You know what? I'm denied access." Mm -hmm. And I thought, "But I have this card key that lets me in the door now." And. Uh, Okay, I'm I'm here. Marvelous. We would never I'm exclude kinding. you from anything. Oh, I hope not. Thank you. Never, never. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Doan. Commissioner Duggan. Here. And Commissioner Fisher. Here. And Commissioner Lysick. Here. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we'll begin this evening by reports from our chief executive officer and management staff. Commi Mr. Hickman, sir. Thank you, uh, President Sanders, commissioners. Good evening. Uh, and uh, welcome to almost spring. So <laughs> we're getting there. All right. So I uh, wanted to give you an update uh, on my upcoming schedule. Um, so next week, President Sanders and I will be traveling to Washington, D.C. Uh, March 22nd through March 24th. Um, the purpose is to meet with uh, legislators and regulatory organizations to advocate for some funding for TVWD. Uh, in my absence, CEO Pete Boone will be acting uh, in capacity for me while I'm away. Um, I will also be on vacation the week of April 3rd, um, and uh, that one I'm going to be uh, completely unavailable. I'll be on some rock cliff somewhere. Um, so uh, for that one, um, during my absence, I've asked uh, our customer service manager, Andrew Kallstrom, to be our acting, my acting in capacity while I'm gone. Is it is it too soon to say bring enough water, Tom? <laughs> is it no, too it's soon? Not too, I, okay. I, actually, I actually told my partners that I'm going with that, uh, hey, I am not going lean on water. I just want Thank you to you. know we're carrying water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's the desert. <laughs> OK, um, future work sessions. Uh, so uh, I you'll see in tonight's presentation you saw in last week's work session. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, and uh, I just wanted to give you an update that we've been making a great deal of progress on on these uh, things there. It's a lot of the uh, I, I told Commissioner Doan earlier today. It's a lot of the ice that's below the water level. So <laughs> that we're doing. So in the coming months, uh, we will be using these work sessions uh, to provide updates on things like our DEI initiative, uh, the progress and status of AMI, and that tied to our monthly billing, um, updates on our compensation study, and the finalizing of our mission, vision, and values. So we, we're approaching the end on uh, some of these. Um, all of them are in some state of, of work. Um, 
And uh, it just want to let the commissioners know that it, it's been a very busy time uh, these last few months. Um, and we're I, I don't I don't know if staff sees it yet, but I certainly do. There is some daylight here coming uh, and uh, with with these projects wrapping up. These are very foundational projects that we needed to get completed. Um, and, and and in particular, our mission, vision and values. That is what's going to be the foundation for our DEI initiative work to land on. That's that's going to be the foundation for that. So uh, and and a lot of these like the AMI and the monthly study, uh, the monthly billing, all of that goes uh, hand in hand in glove. So all right, uh, unless there are any questions for me, I have no additional updates and I'm going to turn this over to Andrew Karlstrom and uh, he can pre present the uh, the primary report this evening. Thank you, Tom. All right. Well, good evening, President Sanders and Board of Commissioners. Tonight's uh, department report is going to be pretty brief, but the title is CIS and related topics. Wanted to give you a few um, items on our meter to cash modernization journey. And here's the summary. So we continue our adaptation to the new CIS Open SmartFlex that continues something we're calling normalization. We're establishing with clean water services what we're calling the phase two priorities. These projects are uh, partnership decisions between the two agencies. We still have work to do on the new joint billing operational agreement. We are planning. Um, planning is underway for the resumption of collections, including shutoffs, and planning is also underway now for the initial monthly billing project. I think you know that the AMI design phase work is underway, and AMI, um, that should be monthly billing, not joint billing, will be uh, included in the proposed budget. So just a reminder on the CIS stabilization, um, the stabilization of a CIS solution after go live is where the utility adjusts to new processes, procedures, and policies of, news, of the new system. It's been a very um, intense time for staff. And as we support customers, as we go through uh, the post go live world, the contractual stabilization was four months that ended in November. The operational, the operational stabilization, what we learned from other utilities before we started this project was uh, expect longer timelines. And that's why we're calling this the, the normalization. So that adaptation continues. The phase two uh, projects, these are improvements that the PBWD and clean water services will undertake following the core implementation. We are establishing those priorities together right now. Um, that will include collections and monthly billing, but there are quite a few other items on that list. And just as a reminder for everyone, um, Clean Water Services and TBWD are partners in the new CIS, so we're joint owners. And the priorities of these projects that uh, impact the jointly owned CIS, as well as shared resources, must be agreed upon by both TBWD and Clean Water Services. And this is what we... Um, I know you've seen this before, but I wanted to put it uh, back on your radar. We had a three phase, um, three agreement approach for CIS. The first phase was the uh, selection process. The second was the implementation and the third was ongoing operations. Our first IGA with clean water services for CIS was in 2018. The second for implementation was authorized in 2020. We still have work to do on the final agreement, but both agencies have been joint billing for quite a long time, actually since 1994 by IGA. The, the current IGA for joint billing expires in two years with five-year renewals, but and while we still have two years until that expires, we want to get this done sooner than that. And finally, a few items, uh, collections, monthly billing and AMI. Um, as a reminder, shutoffs were halted prior to the CIS go live. We're currently planning resumptions of collections, including shutoffs, monthly billing, where we've started the planning for um, what we're calling the initial monthly billing project. Over the long term, monthly billing is really closely tied to getting that consumption data from, um, from AMI. And AMI, the design phase work is underway right now, including implementation costs. We'll get that uh, the consultant report 
uh, next month. And again, we anticipate that AMI will be included in the proposed budget and we'll have a more comprehensive update at a future board meeting. And that's what I have for tonight. If you have any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. All right, Andrew, I don't hear anyone speaking up for questions, so thank you very much for your presentation this evening. Thank you. And uh, I guess now we are ready to move on to our next item, which will be our com re yes, commissioner communications, which are reports of meetings attended. And we will begin with Commissioner Doan. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> OK, uh, let's see. There's tonight's meeting. I had a meeting this morning with uh, with Paul and Tom uh, to cover the stuff that happened last Tuesday when my wife was having uh, spine surgery. Uh, there was the RAC meeting and there was the work session earlier this month. And that's it. Glad to hear everything turned out OK, Commissioner Doan. Um, moving on then to Commissioner Duggan, please. Uh, this month uh, I uh, will report that I attended the RAC meeting number five. Um, I was on the 21st of February. On the 2nd of March, there was uh, a meeting of the WWS Commission um, where we had an executive session for property transactions. On the 7th was the uh, board work session where we uh, received uh, financial uh, 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 budgeting options and our uh, class and comp initiative. Uh, on the 13th, um, uh, I attended with Commissioner Lysak the finance committee meeting where we continued uh, the budget strategies on the financial end. Also on the 13th uh, in the evening, I attended the City of Beaverton State of the City address by Mayor Lacey Beatty. On the 14th, um, yesterday, I had a meeting with uh, uh, Tom and Todd regarding our agenda planning for tonight and then tonight's meetings. Uh, that's it for March. Great, thank you, Commissioner Duggan. How is that new RESER facility? It is a stunning building. I is it? I I am very impressed. Um, yeah, I, I I had seen it a thousand times on paper and planned you in my former position with the city of Beaverton, <laughs> but to actually see it now in in uh, in finished form. It was amazing. Um, it, it really is a, 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 a nice uh, venue. Marvelous. Yeah, it looks beautiful from the outside. One of these days we'll be able to afford to go in. Um, all right, uh, Commissioner Fisher, please. Good evening all. Well, I also attended the RAC and our previous uh, executive session. And then I was also supposed to go to the State of the City address uh, the other night, but I got pulled into an informal meeting uh, with some other Washington County residents with our Congresswoman, our new Congresswoman, uh, Andrea Salinas. So that was really fun. And attending tonight's meeting, of course, and then tomorrow morning, I will again be with Congresswoman Andrea Salinas at the Westside Economic Alliance Forum. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher and Commissioner Lysak. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, all of my meetings have been covered. Um, so the the three seven uh, board work session, uh, the uh, finance committee that um, Commissioner Duggan spoke to, and then uh, this evening's board meeting and executive session. Um, and I do want just to recognize um, uh, Paul and his team uh, pulling together a lot of very valuable information uh, between our work session, uh, the finance committee meeting, and then tonight. I really appreciate. Uh, the work that, that him and his team did and how, how quickly they communicated with us and look forward to the discussion this evening. Yeah, they never fail to impress, do they? Yeah, it's sort of a double edged sword, though. Um, you keep you just keep raising those expectations and then we can ask for 
uh, more and more detail than we might otherwise uh, be deserving of. <laughs> this is true, but uh, thank you for acknowledging them because we do uh, greatly appreciate the work that uh, Paul and his team do. Uh, for myself, um, it, it's certainly focused on the legislative side of things. Um, I've met with Tom and uh, CFM uh, basically weekly. I meet with Tom on Mondays and then every other week we're including CFM. Um, there's a bunch of intermediate th intermediary things that, you know, emails with CFM that I've just stopped, um, I guess, kind of paying attention to because they happen so often. Uh, but in addition to those meetings on the 21st and the 27th, the 28th, we had our Willamette River Water Coalition meeting with our uh, water rights partners in the cities of Tiger, Tualatin, and Sherwood. Uh, not a lot to report there, but more so in the future. Funding has been put into place to um, start to plan for certification of our water rights when uh, as we move forward into the future. So that was probably the big outcome of that meeting. Uh, you all mentioned the uh, work session um, and then Commissioner Duggan mentioned as well the planning meeting for the agenda and then tonight's meeting. Uh, with that then we will move into the next item which is the topics to be raised by commissioners and um, I will uh, I will comment on that first just to let everybody know. Um, you, you heard that uh, Tom and I are heading to DC next week. The following week, we are going to be down in Salem doing the same kind of similar. We'll be again uh, communicating with the state legislators on our needs, uh, but we were successful in getting um, some support from the Washington County Chamber of Commerce uh, this week, we heard. And I wanted to take a second to thank um, Dave Kraska, who uh, stepped in for us at the last minute and gave a presentation to the policy committee for Washington County Chamber. And uh, as of early this week, they've agreed to um, sign off on a letter of support for us to send back down to the state legislature um, in support of our financial request to uh, the, the state this year. So um, a lot of gratitude to Dave. Um, to, to Tom and then the folks at CFM for making it happen to set up the meetings with the uh, Washington County Chamber of Commerce. So that was that was really good news. Um, I'll check to see if anybody else has any commissioner communications they want. Otherwise, we can move to public comment. Yes, it is great news, Dave. And again, thank you because we threw that on your plate at the very last minute and you were able to meet that obligation. So we're, we're thankful. Thanks, Dave. All right, OK, not hearing anything else then. Um, we will go to public comment. Uh, public comment time is set aside for persons wishing to address the board on items on the consent agenda and matters not on the agenda. Additional public comment will be invited on agenda items as they are presented. And I'm wondering, do we have any persons this evening who would like to comment? Not hearing any, we will move on to our uh, agenda this evening, beginning with item number one, our consent agenda, where our consent agenda items are considered to be routine and may be enacted in one motion without separate discussion. Any board members may request that an item be removed by motion for discussion and separate action. Any items requested to be removed from the consent agenda for separate discussion will be considered immediately after the board has approved those items which do not require discussion. This evening we are asking for consent to approve the February 15th, 2023 regular meeting minutes and to approve the March 7th, 2023 work session minutes. Do I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Commissioner Duggan, so moved. Thank you, Commissioner Duggan. 
Uh, Commissioner Liza, I second. Commissioner Lysak seconds. I think Commissioner Doan is trying, but he's still on mute. Yeah, I was trying to give him the opportunity for the second, but I we can see we can see him we can see him saying it, but um, because we're remote. <laughs> yeah, maybe I am a luddite. Uh, anyway, I can't unmute my my microphone. So, but this means yes. This means no. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. Understood. All right. So um, I'll ask our district recorder to provide the roll call vote, please. Commissioner Doan. Thumbs up works. All right. Commissioner Duggan. Yes. Commissioner Fisher. Yes. Commissioner Lysak. Yes. And Commissioner Sanders. Yes. Fantastic. The motion passes. Thank you, everybody, for your yes and thumbs up. Uh, the next item is our business agenda this evening. We will begin by consider the adoption of a resolution approving the 2023 through 2025 Biennium Strategic Initiative and Financial Strategy for the Tualatin Valley Water District. We'll begin this presentation with a staff report by Tom and Paul. Well, good evening once again, and uh, I, I am sufficient, sufficiently caffeinated for this next part. So um, I, there's there's a lot of repeat here uh, that you saw last week, uh, but we thought it was important for the public record to, to cover this material. Um, so uh, we're going to get started on this and uh, feel free to interrupt if you have questions. Uh, or comments, um, and then of course, as always, at the end, we we have uh, the the questions and answers and discussion period for all of you. So, uh, overview of the presentation tonight. Uh, so, um, I'm going to cover the district strategic initiatives, um, what the carryover initiatives are, and any of the new initiatives. So I'll be discussing those, um, and then I'm going to hand it off to uh, our CFO, Paul Matthews. And he's going to talk about the different scenarios. Um, he'll he'll cover again the scenarios we covered last week, and then also what we heard from last week to uh, develop the modified uh, uh, approach that we will also be presenting tonight. So, uh, all right. So uh, again, uh, sorry for the repeat on some of this. I, I will try to to go quick, but I think it's important to cover that um, our concerns as the management team uh, really haven't changed. They they haven't changed since I've actually um, been the CEO um, because we've just been in this significant investment cycle on the WWSS. Um, so one of the big risks uh, that we face is future rate increases could be higher uh, than we had planned that we're seeing that now. Uh, and these are due to the inflationary things. We'll get into that in a, in a little bit. Um, we're concerned the economy may go into a recession. Um, this is a, something we said years ago uh, and we, we still don't know, but lots of things can happen with the economy that can impact things. Um, and then our collection efforts, uh, we are, as you heard from uh, our, uh, Andrew Karlstrom, uh, he was explaining that we are trying to get this back off the ground and going again, um, where we're getting back to doing uh, shutoffs. But of course, before we get to shutoffs, that's a last resort. Um, we're trying to get customers to engage with us uh, and get that effort um, up and running again so that we can get the uh, amount of collections down. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of risk that remains with construction, uh, mostly with the WWSS. Um, there's a lot of construction in front of us and, and a lot of stuff can happen during construction. Um, our overall recommendation is that we continue to build financial capacity that we, uh, of course, manage our expenditures carefully. 
that we adopt rates that provide financial resources in advance. Uh, and again, that's a lot of what's being presented tonight. Um, and then we also want to enhance the customer assistance program. The rate advisory committee is got one more meeting next week where they're going to finalize their recommendation uh, and then be bringing that back to the board here in April. Um, but uh, we've put money in the numbers you'll see tonight for what we believe they're going to be suggesting for the customer assistance program. And then of course, uh, as you heard uh, from President Sanders, we're gonna continue to pursue federal and state assistance. Um, you know, the, the, you have to show up to get the money and uh, they, they you, you got to be present. And so um, we're going to continue to be knocking on doors and and making rounds and then applying for anything that um, comes available uh, that we can find. So uh, what are the district's initiatives? Um, well, uh, you can see across the top, there, that's what the, the the big broad category of human investment, intergovernmental relations, business intelligence, uh, efficiency through modernization, and current initiatives. So uh, I'll start over um, on the human investment. Uh, so we want to make sure our employees are uh, prepared to be successful in meeting the future district requirements. So that's in large part making sure that um, as we take over uh, fully operating the new uh, WWSS, that our staff is well equipped, trained to, to do that work. Uh, intergovernmental relations, um, we continue to work with uh, our partners in the region um, and in working to improve relationships. I would say that they have greatly improved. Um, it doesn't mean we don't hit bumps, but uh, they're much better than what they were just a few years ago. Um, and then uh, we obviously want to solidify that TVWD, uh, that we're, we're a necessary and desired regional resource, um, not seen as just an entity that you have to deal with. Um, Business intelligence, we want to continue to improve uh, planning of the district's ability to respond uh, by developing actionable information from disparate sources of data. Quite simply, we got a lot of data cleanup to do, and uh, there'll be more on that. And, and certainly, if you have questions about that, um, we have our IT director, Tim Bowen, uh, on the call here tonight. Um, efficiency through modernization, uh, we really need to look at um, where we can be more efficient by using uh, modernization tools. Um, the primary one you're gonna hear about tonight is AMI. Um, that's a, it's a significant uh, modernization effort um, that actually then allows us to shift uh, some staffing resources over to other high priority areas. And then uh, certainly last but not least, the current initiatives, we just simply can't fail on those things that we've already launched on. And that is primarily the WWSS, uh, that is on a set of rails. We, we, we It's fully uh, contractually obligated uh, to get completed. And uh, Dave and his team are well down the tracks um, to making that happen. So, um, but that's certainly not the other only one you heard again from our customer service manager, Andrew Kallstrom, who said we're, we're working on the CIS to get through normalization. So that's another one that's uh, underway and we continue to roll that forward um, and we have to have that go through completion. And then at the very start of tonight's meeting, I mentioned a bunch of those, the ice under the water, all of those are current initiatives that we're trying to complete. Uh, the DEI, the comp study, all those things. So, uh, the strategic planning process. Um, so, uh, the departments, uh, they prepare, you know, a bottoms up SWOT. What are they seeing from each department level? Uh, then the leadership team develops what they see as, as the strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and then we put those two together uh and uh take a look at them to help develop our focus and uh and then i propose the strategic initiatives 
And what we're here tonight for is asking you to approve those strategic initiatives. So a little bit about um, our SWOT analysis. Um, I'm not going to go through each of these individually because there's just a lot of them here. Um, I will hit on some highlights, though. Uh, so under strengths, um, I, I really, I can't say this enough. We have remarkable, excellent staff. Um, they really are uh, top of the game. Um, and uh, I, I just am very thankful. Uh, and, and the amount of our customers that, I just got another one today, that come in and, and write in saying great things about our staff, um, that, that's worth a lot. I've worked at places where that wasn't true. Um, and we get a lot of really good feedback from our customers that interact with our staff. Um, I mentioned the partnerships, um, but I think one of the biggest strengths that we have once we get to having the Willamette operational is having the capacity for regional infrastructure impact. So in other words, we can be a water provider to a, a, the larger region of Washington County. So um, it's a good spot for, for us to be in. It's a good strength. Um, weaknesses, we got a lot to do. You, you, you've seen a lot of it. You've heard a lot about it. Um, there's a lot on our list. We are trying to get to a point where that list begins to taper down. Um, so we're, we're getting close to where we can start to um, shift efforts as we finish up some of this other work that we'll be talking about here momentarily. Um, you know, the, the other big one that I would hit there is the technology debt. Um, certainly, um, we spent the better part of a decade preparing to implement the WWSS, and in doing so, um, we've we've uh, we've fallen behind on some of the technology. So we're, we're we've got a bit of a debt there to, to cover, and so that's things like AMI, like the CIS that we've implemented, those kinds of things. Um, and until those are up and running, we're still in a bit of a debt there. Opportunities, uh, these are always uh, good. Um, and so staff development is a great opportunity for our staff uh, that um, as we bring on the WWSS, it's it's a higher skill set. Um, so there's great opportunity there uh, for our existing staff. Um, and then this, we can continue to drive uh, our, our leadership um, in the region. Uh, and I think we're doing so. Uh, we are, we're working, we're sponsoring actually here later this fall, uh, one of uh, 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 a, a, a communications uh, platform um, that we're working with other utilities on and uh, really being seen as a leader in, in that kind of uh, the world. Um, within the utilities, but we're also trying to be seen as a leader in operations as well. And I would argue we are. We've been, we've been asked by a number of entities to fill in as a DRC where they're missing DR, DRCs, and that's direct, direct responsible charge um, for the system. Um, I already mentioned uh, our advocacy for state and federal funding, um, and really the opportunity there is the dollars. Uh, and so it's not the advocacy, it's it's hopefully bringing home dollars is is the opportunity. <laughs> um, and that that's yet to we'll see. So um, I do want to remind, uh, you know, that the board and, and uh, certainly to uh, any public that's listening that um, we have had some success. Um, we have gotten four million dollars from the federal government so far. Um, drop in the bucket compared to the scale of the project, 1.6 billion, uh, but we are having some su success and, and it's um, similar to the success some of the other partners in the region have had in their, in their requests. Threats, it looks like a long list just simply because there are a lot of threats. Um, so uh, we just talked about workload already. We're trying to manage that um, and hopefully as we get further down the road sometime this fall, 
hopefully we'll start to see a little bit of breathing room there. Uh, I believe we will. I'm going to do our best to those things that we have uh, a gas pedal and a brake on, those initiatives and projects that we can choose to slow down on, we will. Um, so that that can buy us some capacity, namely the development of the strategic plan. That's one that we can we can take a little longer if we need to. Um, it's more important that we get it right than we than to just simply get it done. Uh, we don't want to do check the box exercises. Um, and cybersecurity always remains a threat. Uh, it's uh, we're we're constantly under attack. Um, so are all other entities. Um, our IT uh, team has done a phenomenal job keeping um, our guard up and keeping us protected. But uh, those folks that are behind these uh, attacks, they continually up their game. And so we have to continually up our game and stay on top of that. Um, and then uh, the economic downturn, it, I mentioned before, is a big threat. Um, and we're also very concerned about um, our customers' ability to pay. Um, as you'll see, uh, we have to do rate increases. We know that we have customers that this is a challenge for. We are trying to be proactive and develop uh, a funding mechanism to help those customers that are in need. We're also trying to uh, create um, opportunities for them by getting monthly billing to them before everybody else. So we're working on a number of fronts to help uh, with that, um, but it still remains a, a, a threat. Um, and then, of course, always the legal and regulatory environment. Um, it's just one of those things we just don't know where it's going to go. So on to what are we doing? Um, department activities. So um, again, I'll, I'll try to go through these quickly. In the administrative services department, I mentioned early on tonight the class comp study, the mission vision values, the DEI initiative, all of those are underway. Um, we're, we're very excited. Uh, the timing's working out really well that as the mission vision values here is wrapping up, the DEI is taking off and that work then can land on this foundation work that we've done with the, the mission and values. Um, and then uh, pursue governmental affairs initiative. So this is something we're doing. Um, working on on a couple different fronts here to to cover that gap, um, and uh, I, I really do appreciate um, how much uh, President Sanders fills in at times on this role, um, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate his involvement on it. Um, but uh, we are trying to to get it so he he's not the only go to. So. Um, uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it but it, it's it's a lot of work. Um, in the customer service department, um, we talked about the monthly billing. So uh, the, you're going to hear more about this. You're going to get a, a full presentation on this on May 5th um, of our how we're planning on getting getting there. That'll also be tied with um, the AMI update and, and uh, where we're at with that. And uh, right now, we're hoping to have the monthly billing uh, at least starting by August 1st. So, and again, we're targeting the communities that are in the highest need first to, to get monthly billing. Um, normalization of operations for this new CIS. Um, again, Andrew talked about that earlier tonight. Um, we've, we've talked about the uh, reinstitution of the collection activities. We got a lot to do there. Um, as you know, when we uh, went to go live with CIS, it was recommended that we cease those collection activities to focus on CIS. We're, we're now at a point we got to get our attention back onto those collection activities. Um, we are going to be updating our meter reading software. Uh, just because the current software we have is outdated and no longer supported. Uh, so this is a bit of a Band-Aid uh, to a longer-term solution that's tied to AMI. And lo and behold, the next one, 
uh, plan and implement AMI. So a um, lot going on in customer service, engineering and ops. Um, they are very busy as, over there as well. Um, so we will be developing a new water system master plan uh, here kicking off in this next budget. Um, and uh, they're also working on a uh, new project management strategy. What that's really about is having uh, our staff trained as uh, in a more formal way in project management. Um, that's a really critical thing um, so that we can you know, accurately measure and track uh, our progress on these projects um, that we, we do in house. Um, and then asset management program, uh, that is always ongoing. It, it's a it's a never ending story. Uh, I mentioned uh, earlier today to Commissioner Doan that if you if you imagine a continuum of one to ten uh, for asset management, I would argue we're probably at about a six um, out of ten. So ten being ideal, perfect. We're making progress. Um, I'd like to see us get closer to the seven, eight range. Um, so that's what we're pushing forward with. Uh, the coordination with the WWSP, our folks need to know how to operate this new system before it comes online. So uh, a lot of effort is going on there with our ops team. Um, and then, of course, the day to day operations and, and maintenance of our existing water system. Uh, a lot of miles of pipe in the ground, uh, thousands of valves. All of that needs regular maintenance um, and oversight. Uh, so that's the normal day to day, and and there's a lot. It's it keeps them busy. Um, and then of course getting our in district CIP projects completed, and we have a few of those. Uh, continuing with department activities, uh, the finance department. Well, one of the reasons why we're here tonight is they need to issue a new revenue bond. <laughs> so uh, they need to uh, to get some information tonight from all of you uh, so they can finish uh, some of their work to get that uh, revenue bond. Um, and I, I, I Kid, gently kid about this, but managing rate and affordability is becoming a very high wire act uh, for us. Um, and uh, I, I always just imagine Paul, he's he's out there on a rope that's getting thinner. So um, <laughs> I'm trying to assure him I got a net underneath him. But uh, anyways, um, <laughs> but it, it's a tough act and uh, we continue to try to manage our the rates and the affordability side of those rates. Um, uh, the uh, finance department's going to be heavily involved in our strategic planning framework, um, which is the next step after we complete the uh, mission and values work. And then uh, we're going to be looking at uh, modifying uh, our finance department, our procurement process um, to support our DEI, DEI initiative. We're certainly within state law there, um, but we could do better. And we're going to look for those opportunities of where we can do better and, uh, and then look to implement those into our process. Um, Dave Kraska with the water supply program, um, he's got this thing on a set of rails and he's doing his best to make sure those rails don't get bent. Um, and uh, he's on track right now to deliver the WWSS and the WIF capital projects by um, the, the summer of 2026. Um, he, th there's a lot of managing and commissioning of startup activities uh, there as we get closer. Uh, and then uh, leading the entire WWSS system integration efforts. So as we start going from our current sources of water to the Willamette, it's a lot of effort there. Um, and that ties heavily into the prepare for our operations plan. Uh, this is right now, uh, Dave and his team are, are eyeballs deep in this. And this is going to be a multi-year effort to get the operations plan complete. That's not something that's going to happen overnight. A lot of people involved with Hillsborough um, and us to, to get that document done. Um, and then coordinating staffing. 
there's a number of staff that are currently uh, dispatched to the entire WWSS program. Um, and uh, as that program winds down, those folks are going to be needing to uh, come back and Dave is coordinating uh, with uh, our staff here to do that. Uh, and then last but not least is our IT services department. Um, they're looking, they are actively working on implementing the business intelligence uh, initiative um, and helping us refresh our technology. So trying to address that technology debt that we mentioned earlier. Um, it's a never ending expansion of cybersecurity program. Uh, again, uh, if you ever want to really get, a, you know, get your toe in the water on this one, it's pretty shocking to listen to the amount of work that it takes um, to stay on top of this and, uh, and just the number of attacks that we see on a daily basis. And then, um, and then, of course, uh, IT plays a big role in supporting our strategic business projects. So this is getting to where we have a, a really good dashboard of key performance indicators that we can we can see and and monitor on a regular basis. So uh, this everything I just said fits here um, in a tighter summary. So our current initiatives. I mentioned um, uh, a few times, uh, I won't go through each of those, um, but we have to complete those. The, these are not things that we can back off on, that we, we, we've we got to continue to move forward, um, and we, we need them to land uh, solidly. The new initiatives um, that we're talking about that largely are the things that we have control over um, in this new budget and the and in the uh, financial strategy is the monthly billing. That really isn't an option. Um, that is something we've got to get done. We know it's a critical step to helping our customers that are in uh, the, the, the toughest economic situations. Um, that monthly billing is a, is a key step to helping them. Um, AMI is directly tied to the monthly billing. So you, you, it's, you can't have one without the other. Um, and then in case anyone isn't aware of, I, I get used to my acronyms here, so, um, but in case anyone isn't aware of AMI, it's the automated metering infrastructure uh, for anyone that's, that's listening. Um, and then lastly, our business intelligence. Um, this is, as I mentioned earlier, it's integral to having a new strategic plan. Um, if you have a strategic plan, we need the business intelligence to, that supports it. Um, otherwise, there's not a lot of point in having it. So um, we have to continue to move forward with that. So uh, with that, um, that is what we are asking the board to adopt tonight, um, these strategic initiatives. And um, unless there's questions for me, I'm going to be turning this over to our CFO, Paul Matthews. Well, Harry, no questions. Uh, good evening, President Sanders and commissioners. And first, I want to thank you for your kind words uh, earlier about the effort the team went through. And on the call tonight, actually, is Joe Healy. And Joe is the person that has done all the heavy lifting. So I um, appreciate him uh, joining us tonight and, and you all probably know that. Uh, but, you know, we were also helped by all the departments and department managers and their teams in pulling together the information that we needed. So it really was a team effort, but Joe deserves special recognition. Uh, our financial management process, uh, and again, I'm covering this. We talked about this last week, but uh, uh, just to make sure that it's uh, fully in the public record. It starts with the strategic initiatives and identifying those things uh, that uh, align the district's activities with what our customers needs. And that's what Tom just covered, uh, giving us that to-do list over that next two-year two year period. As Tom mentioned, we are going to be developing a new strategic plan framework with the idea that that will extend further out in the future and be more comprehensive. But currently, this is our, our process. 
With that, then we develop financial strategies, which we're presenting to you tonight. Once we have those strategies in place, we're able to develop a budget through the budget process, which will work with the budget committee, which will be you as well as five citizen members and present a proposed budget. Uh, once we're done with that, we'll actually come back and develop the full financial plan uh, that will drive our rate process. So we're early in this uh, process at the financial strategy phase and the strategic initiative phase. So the headwinds that we're facing right now, I think it's important that we put this out here so members of the public understand some of the challenges that the district is facing and why our financial situation has changed over the past few years. Uh, one is starting with the Portland Water Bureau. Next year, we're expecting our wholesale water increase to be 26.1%. That's based on a forecast uh, we received from the city of Portland earlier uh, this, um, this went wrong February last month. So that's their estimate of what uh, our increase will be in uh, the water rate for water we purchased from Portland. In addition to that, we're expecting a rather large increase from the Joint Water Commission. Just like TVWD, these organizations are facing the same inflationary pressures uh, that we're facing. And so although these numbers are high and, and uh, certainly we, we don't like to see increases like that, we do understand uh, the, what's driving those. Uh, over the biennium, so over a two-year period, uh, the cost for our existing staff, that includes uh, health care, salaries, and other benefits, um, we're expecting to increase over that two-year period by 13.8%. So that's uh, a little bit more than 6.8%, um, I think, on, a, on an ongoing basis, on an annual basis. We've talked quite a bit about the pro the uh, project cost increase at the Wyoming Water Supply Program. We're still absorbing that $200 million into our financial strategy, as well as $6.3 million, which is an important part of integrating the Willamette into TBWD system so we can continue to provide that level of quality water that we, uh, that we want. The last item we have on the list here is we're expecting about, over the biennium, so over the two-year period, about a 25% increase in the cost of uh, pumping power that we get from uh, our uh, uh, utility. And again, uh, power costs are going up, energy costs are going up, and we have that into our forecast based on uh, estimates that uh, we've received from PGE. So we go out and do these analysis. These are the assumptions. Largely, these items we don't have control over. We have a contract relationship with Portland. We have our relationship with um, the Joint Water Commission. Um, the PG rates are subject to PUC oversight, and those tariffs aren't something that we can control. But there are some items that we do have some control, and the financial strategies that we presented at the work session uh, and the ones that we're contemplating tonight have these things. The advanced metering infrastructure project that uh, Tom just talked about is one of those. We can have alternative phasing on that project uh, to meet the uh, financial strategies. On staffing, we are going to have to add staff to build up to have the capacity to manage the water supply system, uh, but we can time that and we can hold vacancies, uh, have fewer additions and do that over time. Those things can vary among the financial strategies. And then the last one, as Tom mentioned, um, as our cost of water is going up, we do have a customer assistance program that we are putting into the budget. It's an enhancement over the current customer assistance program. And that's what our rate advisory committee, or our so-called RAC, is helping us do. Uh, but we can have more or less assistance and size the program accordingly. So based on that, when we presented at the work session last week, we presented three strategies. Uh, the first strategy we described as the advancing strategy, and that provided the resources and service levels that the district would otherwise pursue if we weren't seeing the tough economic times that we're having and uh, needing to complete all the work that we have on the well and water supply system. The strategy two, the maintaining, that strategy is, is sort of the Goldilocks in the middle strategy. It provides the resources that we need to complete the well and water supply system, as Tom described on the rails towards completion. Uh, monthly billing allows us to phase that in, starting with our most vulnerable customers first and then building out. Phasing in the AMI, uh, coordinating that with the uh, monthly billing, as Tom indicated, and it maintains the uh, existing service levels. So that's the goal of, of that strategy, too. And then the third strategy, if the board were interested, was the most affordable strategy in the near term, maybe not in the long term, but the near term. It would fund the completion of the water supply system, 
monthly billing and a partial AMI, but it would impact service levels. Based on our conversations with the, well, let me finish this. These were the projections that we showed you uh, at the last work session. I don't need to spend too much time on that. We spent about more than an hour talking about them last week and nothing in this slide has changed. Um, and in fact, the next slide is again a recap. For some reason it won't seem to advance uh, on the some of the debt parameters that we would have. So in the top part, you see the total amount of bonds we would issue in millions of dollars. And in the bottom panel of this uh, presentation um, are the one of the most important metrics to the district right now, something described as our net leverage, which is how leveraged the district is in borrowing the money. In this case, a lower number is better, a higher number is, is more of a problem. So we're trying to keep that number uh, below eight in the long run, below seven, and uh, try to get it down even below that as the district's finances improve. So these were the three strategies that we presented to the board based on feedback we got from the board. We came back with two strategies that we presented to the uh, board's finance committee. Uh, the first is the maintaining strategy, which was a, a, the strategy that I just described. Uh, that would largely uh, have the rates following our current method, which is to try to avoid rate shock as much as possible by having equal rate increases over time. You might notice that this year we don't have precisely equal over time. And as we've gotten closer to the final funding of the Wine Water Supply Program, our flexibility to defer borrowing needs and rate increases is somewhat restricted, uh, but that's that's the goal. And then based on feedback we got, um, we came up with what we're describing creatively as strategy 2A, modified maintaining, uh, maybe not the most creative naming uh, uh, strategy we've had, but anyway, that's it. The expenditures under 2A and strategy 2 are identical. So it truly is an apples to apples comparison. Uh, we are introducing higher rate increases in the first year, and that will reduce the, the future financial risks and help us manage the overall capital cost of the utility. And I'll talk more about that here just in a moment. But if the financial risks that we're hedging against here don't materialize, eventually over time, the rate increases, future rate increases will bring strategy 2A down to be essentially comparable to strategy 2. So presented here are the customer impacts of the current proposal. On the top half, you see the percentage rate increases. For strategy two, it's just as we presented last week with a 19.25% increase in 2024. That would become effective November 1st of 2023. So we're talking about fiscal year 24, which starts July 1 and goes through June 30. But that rate increase will be effective November 1st, 2023. And with a subsequent rate increase of 17.5% in fiscal year 25, which would be effective in November 1 of 2024. Uh, the strategy 2A would have a higher increase of 22% in the first year and keep the rest of the rate increases the same. The panel below on the slide shows you what the impact would be on the typical um, residential customer. So our typical residential customer has consumption of seven CCF with a five eighths by three quarter inch meter. The current charge right now is uh, $7.46 for that level of service. And you can see what those future typical bills would be for those customers. The, the main difference, we are talking about increasing the rates and the revenue, but not increasing the expenditures. So what this does is it builds more financial capacity for the district and accumulate some reserves over time. What's presented here in the gray bars are the, the reserves that we would build under the strategy two. The blue bars are the reserves that we would build under strategy 2A. So over this period of time, that would generate about $10 million of additional financial resources. So we don't intend to spend it, but should something happen, all of the estimates that we have, if they're wrong, if, if uh, our power costs are higher than expected or a Portland cost in future years higher than expected or any of these other factors, we would have more financial capacity to deal with those changed events. Presented here are the impacts on the finance. And I mentioned that one of 
the goals of strategy 2A is to uh, improve the district's financial capacity, manage our overall cost of capital. We're in a borrowing mode as we build out this generational uh, project at the Walnut Water Supply Program. Debt is critically important right now. We want to get the best interest rates we can. This will help us do that. Uh, so this would bring our, our net leverage down below 8% by 20, below 8x, eight times by 2025. And we're confident that this improves our ability to explain to the uh, finance community that our financial strategies is um, is very effective at bringing that net leverage down. And it provides that narrative that TVWD is a safe place to invest your money. And we're hoping that will generate more competition for our bonds and bring down interest rates. So with that, um, turn this back over to Tom to finish up, unless there are any questions that you have on the information that I've presented so far. Tom, I will turn it to you. Okay, well, uh, going to a slide here you have seen before, maybe. If I can get there, it's not wanting to. There we go. Um, <laughs> so uh, we we can't we cannot have a discussion around uh, budgets, finance, and and without this discussion of risk. Um, so uh, our Donald Rumsfeld, uh, is, you know, we as you can see here, um, the things we know we feel very confident about. Um, it, as you move along uh, the Donald Rumsfeld scale here, uh, it's the stuff on the right that makes us nervous. Um, the stuff that we we thought we knew, but it turns out we didn't. So um, that's the stuff that really bites, uh, and that's we we've done our best to predict the future, use our crystal balls. Uh, to figure this out, but uh, there's still those things that can change on us that we just don't know. So uh, what are we asking tonight? So we are asking the board to uh, select uh, one of the strategies for Exhibit B of the resolution. So we've provided a sample here so you can accept or select uh, either two uh, strategy two, our strategy two A, um, and then that will get included into uh, the exhibit B of the resolution. And so, whichever one of those you pick, two or two A, then we've given you uh, a sample resolution here um, to approve and adopt. So, with that, that is all. Paul and I have, and we get to turn this back over to you. Great, thank you, Tom. Um, can you go back, if you're still in control, will you go back to uh, the original one, two, and three? And the only reason I'm asking this is because Commissioner Doan was not part of that original discussion. And I think you had that discussion with him today. One more slide, I think. Yeah, that one right there. Um, there's Commissioner Doan with two thumbs up. Commissioner Doan, if you can turn on your mic and we can hear you, just wanted to get if your thoughts I could, on this. I would, but I can't. But you so, did. Yeah, I can sign it, but mm. up, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Again, windows are operated and things are kind of dicey. Sure. I hope somebody can read lips. We can hear I'll you. I'll text you, Todd. We can hear you, Jim. Oh, can you? Yes. My mic says it's, it's silenced. Oh, well, never mind. 
we'll keep to, we, we'd like to get your opinion as we move forward. We know you didn't get a chance to talk about these three strategies initially. Just wanted if you wondered if you wanted to share any opinions on these three strategies. And as you know, uh, the the meeting that was last week, um, the suggestion from the other board members was that uh, we look at a strategy two two a scenario. If that's OK hey. with you. This is Jim Doan. I have. Uh, a desire for strategy one. But I don't think I've got three votes for it. Okay. But I can live with strategy 2A. Very good. Uh, okay. Strategy 1, I think, gets us where we need to go quicker. But strategy 2 will get us there eventually. Strategy 3 is off the table as far as I'm concerned. Marvelous. Um, OK, thank you, Commissioner Doan. Uh, we'll open up the floor to anybody else who wants to comment. Um, Tom, you can move it. I think all the other board members have seen these slides, as you said. If you want to move forward to 2-2A, and we'll open up the uh, floor for any discussion from any of the commissioners um, before we make a motion. Uh, this is Commissioner Doug, and I just have one one brief comment and I want to thank staff very much for uh, thinking through all these uh, various options and uh, uh, adjusting and putting forward strategy 2A, um, keeping that uh, net uh, leverage ratio below eight for uh, except for one year, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, doesn't isn't going to be a, a selling point to anybody that that uh, will, will have uh, a disagreement with our rate increase but uh, I think that that and and the other advantages of 2a will mean that I'll, I'll be supporting 2a but again thanks to staff for um, doing a, an excellent job in uh, putting these things together for our consideration. Yes, Commissioner Lysak. Uh, thank you. This is Commissioner Lysak. Um, I want to echo uh, Commissioner Duggan's statement about uh, the effort that staff went in not only pulling us together, but then doing an excellent job of communicating it to us and facilitating a very robust conversation uh, during our work session. Um, given the circumstances of the uh, the last few years alone, but really looking out over the life of the WWSP, um, we're landing that ship and any ability that we have to cushion some of the future uncertainty now versus uh, even more painful rate shock in the future uh, is absolutely a prudent decision. Um, and I can appreciate how difficult some of the deferral decisions have been uh, as far as uh, investment in other parts of the district. There, there absolutely have been too many deferred needs for me to quickly list. Uh, but that is sort of the the price of responsible financial stewardship uh, balanced with uh, district needs at this point in time. So that's that's why I'll be supporting 2A also. Commissioner Fisher. Uh, I just want to say kudos to, to staff for for doing this for us and giving us a, a fleshed out 2A. Uh, I, I very much appreciate it. And to echo what everybody else says, kudos, thank you. Um, I'm also going to be supporting 2A tonight. Fantastic. Um, all right, then, Tom, if you'd like to move us forward, and I'll, I'll read here. And I believe, um, although I, I, as often, share Commissioner Doan's opinion that, and as I said in our last meeting, um, tend towards uh, option one, um, I will here vote for option 2A. So um, I move we select strategy 2A to be included as exhibit B to resolution approving the 2023 through 2025 biennium strategic initiative and financial strategy for the Tualatin Valley Water District. I think we need to mention that it's resolution 4-23. Yep, and I was going to continue with 
I move the board adopt resolution 4-23, a resolution approving the 2023 through 2025 biennium strategic initiative and financial strategy for the Tualatin Valley Water District. Do I have a motion and a second? This is Jim Doan, so moved. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Doan. Fisher, I second. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher. Sam, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, you can. Commissioner Doan. Yes. Commissioner Duggan. Yes. Commissioner Fisher. Yes. Commissioner Lysak. Yes. And Commissioner Sanders. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. The motion passes. And as Donald Rumsfeld says, if you try to please everybody, somebody's not going to like it. All right. Uh, that being said, that is our final item for this evening's um, monthly board meeting. I will uh, gavel the meeting out. And this meeting is closed. Just to remind everybody, we still have executive session yet this evening. And why don't we give everybody a, uh, a short break and we'll come back together. I've got 712 on my computer. Would uh, 720 be OK for everyone? Is that OK? Are we allowed to do that, Sam? I know it's scheduled for much later, but we're done now. Can we have the um, meeting at, say, 720? Yeah, that's fine. I am going to read uh, our executive session scripts before we leave the regular session, if that's OK with you. Uh, I believe we read that just at the start of our executive session, Sam. Oh, OK. Clark, is that so correct? when we go into executive um, session, then we will have you read that script, OK? Yeah, we can do it at either time, but it's okay. at the convention. We'll do it at the convening. OK. OK, so okay. we will. Uh, I've got 712 now. If 720 is OK with everybody, we'll meet you on a different bat channel. Yes, so we will uh, end this meeting and then everybody that is on the invite list for the executive session, uh, I will see you in there at 720. Great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everybody. Hello. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice night. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. <laughs>